Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I recently at work got a question about how I tolerance cylindrical primary datums and why I sometimes use an axial straightness and why I sometimes will use a cylindricity. So I'll be going over that in the video today. So you'll see cylinders as primary datums all over the place. I don't think it's the most common, but rotating equipment will have lots of cylindrical primary datums reciprocating equipment will have lots of cylindrical primary datums and then if you're working with uh, interference fits a lot of the time you'll see uh, a cylinder as a primary datum as well. So what are some ways that one might choose to control the form of a cylindrical primary datum? Well the first one you should always think of it's classic rule number one the envelope rule size controls form it's forgiving Everyone should use this where they can. Number two, fairly forgiving as well, axial straightness. And number three, for when you have a lot of concern with the surface of the part, cylindricity. So to understand which ones are best suited for your application, I think we should look at the extreme uh, form issues that can occur, or extreme versions of the form issues that can, can occur with each type of control. So, rule number one, as I said, very forgiving, as long as the part fits in with the per fits within the perfect form at MMC boundary, and every actual local size is within the specified tolerance, that part is good to go. Axial straightness is a little bit more restrictive. You might not be able to get this sort of bent pin, even if it does fit within the uh, perfect form at MMC boundary this might not be allowed with an axial straightness. Cylindricity is the most restrictive form tolerance. All of these types of errors are out. You need that surface to um, fit within the two coaxial cylinders separated by the, the given tolerance. So this, this is quite a restrictive way to tolerance a, a cylindrical feature. A couple of other ways that uh, I won't be going over today, but you could control it with circularity and surface straightness. Um, I've never used either of these to control a cylinder uh, as a primary datum, but it's certainly an option for you. Now, having gone over all three of these options with you, which one is right for you? And of course, it's hard to say without actually sitting down looking at the part and the way that it functions, but let's start with the most restrictive first cylindricity i would apply a cylindricity to a feature that is going to have some sort of motion relative to another part so i'm thinking rotating shafts i'm thinking reciprocating shafts like if you're working with like a plane bearing you don't want to have some uh, spot over here that's riding right on the material while the rest of this is sitting on that uh, that film of lubricant you're just going to end up wearing out part of the bore. Um, so any anything like this would be really nasty in like a plane bearing. Uh, similarly, with a reciprocating shaft, you don't want to have sharp edges like this. Um, that's probably not a good call. Something else that might be worthwhile considering cylindricity is if you have an interference fit that you'd like to press out at some point. Um, a good cylindricity would be useful. If you were to do an interference fit with a something like this, it's gonna hold really well, but if you want to press it out, it's just gonna drag along these high points and shear material off, and you're gonna end up potentially ruining the bore that you're pressing this pin out of. In my current rule, I designed a part that was an insert, and it, it needed to drop into um, another part and we decided to use a thermal interference fit so we cooled cooled this insert down with liquid nitrogen and we heated up this block uh, with a torch and dropped the part in and during testing we were a little bit concerned that this these these parts might uh, there might be some motivating force for the part to fall out at some point we just it was in our DFMEA um, so one of the things we tested was we added these little notches in the, in the insert 
so that it would bite into the base material of the part that we were joining it with. And later on, we decided actually it's beneficial if we can press this thing out um, and replace it. But during testing, adding these, adding these little cutouts, it increased the amount of holding force by, I think it was like two or three tons. So when, when we finally eliminated when we finally eliminated these cutouts, it took like half a ton of force on a press to get the part out. But with those with those ridges, it was something like yeah, like three and a half to five tons of pressure or of force on the press. Um, another note: if you are going to design something like this, where you're either pressing it in or you're going to have to press it out, and you've joined it with like a thermal interference fit. You want to make sure you're selecting materials carefully because galling, depending on the length of the bore and the part, could be an issue. So now that we're done with that tangent, I'm actually going to jump to rule number one and skip axial straightness for now. So when is rule number one useful? Well, because this is the most forgiving, um, but it also does have the most aggressive types of form uh, deviation possible. You know, we don't want to use it probably for anything where there's a, a rotating or axial uh, motion relative to another surface unless the size tolerance is extremely tight. But if you've got two stationary parts that are being located using a pin, um, something like this is probably perfect. You know, you're going to guarantee fit between the two parts, but you're also not going to be worried about any sort of sharp edges. And now axial straightness RFS. So although it's not necessarily useful for a rotating part or a reciprocating part that's really close to a uh, another part due to the sharp edges, um, and it's not great for just locating a stationary part um, because it's more restrictive than rule number one, if you had a long shaft where part of the uh, the shaft was in contact or bonded with another part, but there was a large portion of the shaft that was not, um, you know, it's just in free space. Something like this on a rotating shaft would be very useful because the weight distribution would be a lot more uniform than something like this that's bowed. So some sort of rotating shaft uh, where part of it is not in near contact with another part axial straightness RFS is probably a good choice. And last but not least, another bonus one, uh, axial straightness at MMC or LMC, I suppose. So, but axial straightness with axial straightness with a material modifier. And this is what started the conversation at work because I had applied a straightness tolerance at MMC to the primary datum. Uh, and my coworker who's pretty tuned in said, what, why are you doing that? why don't you just use rule number one? And I said, that's an excellent question. I had sent the drawing to sort of a job shop for this prototype part. And I had left it as rule number one because it was a, you know, it was just locating with another part. Um, and the shop said, well, you know, how straight does it have to be? And I said, well, just you just have to follow rule number one. And they said, what, what do you mean? And I tried to explain it to them. They didn't seem to buy it. So I said, okay, fine, I'll put a straightness on it. So I applied a straightness uh, with at zero at MMC because a straightness with zero at, at, a straightness with zero at MMC is the same as rule number one effectively, right? Um, and I'm sure you can imagine the shop that didn't know rule number one did not like a zero uh, at MMC tolerance. So I went back again, and I just removed some of the size tolerance. It was a very uh, generous size. It was like plus minus quarter millimeter, something like that. Any shop could hit it all day. Um, so I took some of that tolerance, applied it to the straightness. Uh, so I said, you know, the size tolerance straight to 0 0.1 at MMC or something like that. And that seemed to make them happy. But... I thought that conversation was interesting and it started a conversation with this person about, you know, when different form tolerances are useful 
And I thought other people might find that interesting. So hopefully you got something out of us and have a good one.